And here is the Writer's Almanac for Monday, the 10th of June, 2019. It was on this day, 1881, Leo Tolstoy, at the age of 52, having written his two great novels, War and Peace and Anna Karenina, set off on a pilgrimage to the Optina Pustin Monastery. He was famous, he was wealthy, had a big family, land, money, It all seemed empty to him. He had trouble sleeping, unable to write, contemplated suicide. So he took a walk in the woods, and he found God. He wrote, At the thought of God, happy waves of life welled up inside me. Everything came alive, took on meaning. He renounced meat, sex, alcohol, fiction, tobacco, dressed like a peasant, wanted to give all of his money away, which made his wife Sophia very unhappy. It's the birthday of the man who said a novelist may lose his readers for a few pages. A playwright never dares lose his audience for a minute. The playwright Terence Radigan, born in London, 1911. It's the birthday of Saul Bellow, born in Lachine, Quebec, Canada, 1913, Russian Jewish parents who had emigrated to Canada in 1911 and who soon moved to Chicago in the Humboldt Park neighborhood. His father was a bootlegger, delivered coal. He imported onions. Bellow's childhood was poor. He was a slum kid, loved Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, went off to Northwestern, studied anthropology there, landed in New York, became a Trotskyist. He was training in the Merchant Marine when World War II ended. He had completed his first novel that came out in 1944, Dangling Man, while he was still in the service. Went off to teach at the University of Minnesota, lived very humbly in St. Paul. Then he won a Guggenheim moved to Paris, and it was there that he composed the novel that made his name, The Adventures of Augie March. It came out in 1953, won the National Book Award. He wrote the book, he said, in a purple fever, writing longhand on trains and in cafes. He said it was a kind of spontaneous event. It was my liberation. Saul Bellow went on to write Henderson the Rain King, Herzog, Humboldt's Gift. But even after he was financially secure, he still taught at the University of Chicago. He said, you're all alone when you're a writer. Sometimes you just feel you need a humanity bath. So you can talk about books, politics, history, America. It's the birthday of the novelist James Salter, born New York City, 1925, pilot in the Air Force, flew 100 combat missions during the Korean War, and came back to become a novelist, best known for his book, A Sport and a Pastime, about the love affair between a Yale dropout living in Paris and a working-class French girl. Here's a poem by Jeff Coomer. What Muskrat Tastes Like During a lull in the conversation at my table, I overhear one of the two well-dressed women of a certain age sitting behind me say that she recently spotted a rather large muskrat swimming in the marsh near her summer house. Her companion dabs her lips with her napkin, and observes that she's eaten muskrat on several occasions, both fried and in stews. And what would you say it tastes like, the first woman inquires while swirling her wine. Squirrel, the second woman responds after the briefest of pauses for reflection. Her answer impresses me as the kind I hope to give when I've attained a certain age and one I'm especially grateful for on this night, having just ordered the chicken. What Muskrat Tastes Like, a poem by Jeff Coomer from A Buzzard in 
The Proper State of Deadness, published by Last Leaf Press and used by permission here on The Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.